Hello, you're with IndiaPostLive.com, India's first live and interactive news conversation web TV. We will talk about today at the conversation at the deadliest avalanche that Mount Everest has ever seen, the world's highest peak. But before we get to that, it's election season and all those of you who are checking out our website must try and play this very interactive game called the Vote Race. You can actually get your Neta, could it be, it could be Raga, AK-49 or even Namo to actually collect as many votes as possible and get to the finish line. It's a very fun and uh, fun game and very interactive. You can also exercise your mental muscles and a bit of your political strategizing and get those votes and get your neta to the race. Uh, the, the man with the highest votes, of course, gets to the finish line. So get your neta to win that race, if not the race of the Lok Sabha elections. Uh, do participate in our uh, vote race and get us your feedback. Coming back to a rather serious uh, conversation today, we will talk about how the native Sherpas who are based in Nepal and actually help a lot of climbers uh, get to the world's highest peak at Mount Everest had to actually pack their bags and ab abandon the tourist season the, for many mountaineers and climbers. This came as a setback because 16 of their colleagues were killed in the deadliest avalanche that was ever seen uh, in, uh, uh, at the Kumbu Icefall and uh, that clearly has the tragedy has put the lucrative tourist season for many climbers uh, actually uh, in jeopardy. We'll find out what really happened in this tragedy. It was in May 1953 that Nepalese Sherpa mountaineer Sherpa Tenzing Norgay, accompanied by New Zealander Edmund Hillary, climbed the peaks of the Mount Everest for the very first time. And now, the walkout by Tenzing's hardy clan, the Sherpas, from the Everest base camp has raised doubts over the climbing season. On the 18th of April, 16 people lost their lives in an avalanche, the worst ever at the base camp of the Everest. Now the climbers are demanding more compensation, better insurance and safer regulations. Till that happens, most have hung their boots, forcing most expedition companies to cancel their climbs. Nepal earns about $3.5 million annually from the Everest expedition, and most attempts are made in mid-May. The big question is, how far are the Sherpas willing to hold out at the expense of their only source of livelihood? And the most latest update we are getting from news agencies is that the agitating Sherpas who had actually threatened to go on a strike in protest of, against the tragedy that had happened have actually decided to resume the climbing season. Uh, that's the report we are getting in. Uh, they have had negotiations with the government to give in more safety measures and proper compensation to the families of the 16 who were killed. Uh, joining us in this conversation today to take it forward with their experiences and perspective, we have Mr. Percy Fernandez who is an expedition for Photographer. He actually took the NCC uh, climb off Everest in 2013. Uh, he's, has, uh, he's also the founder of Mountain Adventures and uh, actually a very avid uh, mountaineer himself and an educator uh, in outdoor space. Uh, also, we have uh, Sindhu Shanmugam. Thank you so much for joining us in the studio. She's an entrepreneur and an avid mountaineer. She was uh, along with a group of uh, five other climbers and had to be uh, who had to be evacuated from Injatsu after three days into that mountaineering expedition. Uh, we have on Google Hangout joining us from Leh, uh, Karn Kaushik who is an alpine climber and also one of the founders of Gek & Co Adventures, uh, Adventure Climbers. Thank you Karn for joining us from Leh. And we have uh, on Google Hangout uh, Mr. Ram Chandra Basnet who joins us from Kathmandu. He is part of a tour operator uh, group. Uh, thank you, Mr. Ram Chandra, for joining us uh, from Kathmandu for your insight and experiences. We'll come to you. Uh, but first, I'll bring in uh, Mr. Percy. Uh, how major is this tragedy? A, a lot of lives lost and the Sherpas who risk their lives uh, every, uh, every time in the tourist season. How much of uh, an impact will this have uh, on their livelihood of the Sherpas? Uh, I think, uh, first of all, uh, yes, of course, it's been tragic. Uh, the, uh, the, the, the quantum, I would say, of tragedy is, uh, is, uh, is I would say, Everestian, uh, because there are 16 Sherpas. Uh, if you look at the uh, number of deaths from uh, 2000 to 2013, uh, it actually overnumbers the number of uh, Sherpas who died between 2000 to 2013, uh, which is about 13 Sherpas have, been, have died from 2000 to 2013. Uh, but in 2014, uh, f uh, 13 Sherpas died and of course one is still missing. So total number is about 16. Uh, so it is really colossal. 
uh, and it is going to have a huge impact, particularly on the Sherpas, uh, who um, for them, for Everest is a livelihood. Uh, so yes, of course, the, 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 uh, the tragedy is colossal, uh, the accident is colossal, uh, but it was all waiting to happen. It was a f nature's freak and, you know, the avalanche was a really big one while they were at Khumbu Ice Fall. Yes, indeed. In fact, I uh, remember it was quite eerie because I was, uh, I was actually asking my uh, expedition leader, Colonel Sharma, who was the expedition leader of the NCC uh, 2013 Everest expedition. Uh, we were sitting at base camp one fine morning and I was asking him, uh, what if an avalanche actually comes across the Khumbu Ice Fall? Uh, this was exactly a year ago. Uh, we were on, uh, on Everest last year, and he said, uh, Percy, I don't think uh, it's a very slim chance. And uh, last week, in fact, uh, when I heard the news, in fact, he called me and said, uh, well, whatever that, uh, whatever you call it, was it a premonition? It, it actually came true. So it was not an avalanche for all the viewers. Uh, it was not a snow avalanche, but it was, a, it was an ice avalanche, which means uh, Seracs basically uh, the height of about uh, uh, three or four story buildings hang literally uh, on the uh, Kumbu ice fall. You have to be there to actually experience what it actually looks like. Uh, so they came tumbling down and uh, basically, so, so it, was, it was basically a nice avalanche and they, and they uh, kind of buried all the, um, the, the guides and the Sherpas who were on the ice fall. Did you feel that, uh, you know, uh the government's uh, reactionary uh, measures or the kind of uh, evacuation measures that happened uh, post the tragedy were, uh, uh, were adequate and do you feel Sherpas are constantly in need of uh, government measures and more backing by the Nepalese government? Uh, yes, well, I think it's quite appalling. Uh, in a sense, uh, the government has uh, announced compensation, which is about uh, the t to the tune of about $403, which is, exactly. which is quite a ridiculous one. Um, well, of course, and also now I think uh, uh, because of the huge outcry, uh, they have increased the compensation, but I'm told that they have to actually go through the cabinet uh, and uh, get an approval. Get an approval. Uh, so first, of course, initial response is uh, quite appalling. But having said that, they don't have the money. Uh, it's very simple. Mm. Uh, so what does the government do? Uh, so one is that they have to have, uh, it's very clear that the Sherpas have to uh, have uh, their insurance is uh, quite high. It's one, except for one company, uh, upon a $200 claim, mm -hmm. uh, uh, there's about a $23,000 uh, compensation. compensation. Just only one company offers that. The rest of them, actually, if you look at the figures, it's quite appalling. Right. Sindhu, I'll just bring you in at this point. Uh, what have been your experience? And you've also always been an avid mountaineer. You've also been uh, to the Everest base camp, if I'm, uh, if I'm correct. Uh, can you just recount what it feels like to be there and uh, how shocking was this or disturbing was this when you have just recently returned from um, another uh, climbing expedition yourself? Yeah. So um, I was in Everest Base Camp last September, so you know, it's just a, just a few months ago. And uh, when we first heard this news, we were just checking into the tea house, and this was just before a summit. And um, I can tell you, you know, even in our tea house, which is I would say about 10 kilometers away from where from the Everest base camp, uh, the atmosphere was just buzzing because all the Sherpas and the climbing guides, you know, all they could talk about that entire day was about this incident, yes. right? And of course, for them, it's their brothers, their friends. And in fact, um, a friend of a friend died in this, in this accident. So one of my very close friends, Sherpa, his friend died in this accident. So, you know, I could, I, I could really feel the pain, um, not just at, at sort of losing their loved one, but also at the reaction of the government, like he said. Uh, paying 400 odd dollars for the funeral charges, I mean, that's, I think, um, yeah, that's, that's kind of a little disrespectful because if you look at it, even when you go on a, um, on, on a smaller expedition, mm -hmm. the kind of money that they earn just in tips is a lot more than that, right? So, yeah. And, you know, how difficult is it in terms of conditions, how physically demanding is it to be just at the Everest base camp, uh, forget, you know, going over to the right. next level? Yeah, uh, I mean, just see, for us, for people that come from uh, from sea level, of course, you know, there's a lot of conditioning and things that we need to do. But I think for the Sherpas, especially the climbing Sherpas, when they have to go beyond the base camp, it is physically exhausting for them as well because they carry everything from your food to your trekking equ equipment. The other guys who fix the ropes and, you know, just do all the hard work yeah. for us to just go and bask in the glory, yeah. right? Because at the end of the day, yeah, it's about 
we summiting and they kind of become the uh, forgotten the shadow yeah the shadow, the shadow. right, right. Yeah. i'll just bring in uh, karan at this point karan as an alpine climber who's uh, you know who's been at this and now is doing it professionally uh, not just for his passion uh, what do you have to say about the tragedy that happened it was a freak of nature yes but could more measures have been taken uh, by the Nepalese government or how difficult is it to be a Sherpa? You, you know, you've known a lot of them. You also deal with some companies in Kathmandu. Uh, tell us, uh, share us your uh, thoughts. Were you asking uh, me? Yeah, I think, think Ramchandra wants to say something. I'll, I'll come to you, Ramchandra. Go ahead, Karan. All right, so I'll, I'll start. First of all, it's not a freak of nature. Uh, in the mountains, avalanches happen. There are uh, all mountaineers. I'm sure I, I know I, I've, I've, I've followed Percy's climbs, yeah. And uh, avalanches, rock falls. This is part of mountaineering. It's it's not a freak of nature. It happens, and climbers have to prepare, have to be ready for this. But for me, what this accident really means is it. As climbers, we all need to introspect and think about why we're climbing, because the world today, the mountaineering world, is divided between what's happening in Everest, which is what we call seat style climbing and alpine style climbers. Now seat style climbers basically uh, climb with a lot of support. Sherpas in, in, at Everest, they call them the ice fall doctors. They essentially climb almost to the top, fix ropes, and uh, most of the climbers essentially just pull up these ropes and get to the top. I'm not saying it's easy, it's extremely difficult, but it's the Sherpas who are the climbers here. It's not, it's not the people pulling on the ropes. They are essentially clients. You know, so if, if you, climbers today need to think of whether that is acceptable to say, if you've pulled on a rope that a Sherpa climber has fixed, have you really climbed this mountain? Because we know it's possible. Uh, a, a couple of months ago, someone climbed Annapurna in, uh, from base camp to summit in 16 hours with no ropes and no Sherpa support. So let's first of all acknowledge the Sherpas not as Sherpas, but as, as climbers. It's the Sherpas who are doing the climbers here, the climbing here. And as climbers ourselves, we need to think about how and why we're climbing. And for me, really, uh, I mean, that's that's what what climbers now need to think about, is what are the reasons for climbing? Because I'm sure the Sherpas were aware that this there was avalanche danger there. But of course, it's their job to go up and fix these ropes. And as, 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 as Percy spoke, they're getting paid for this and they need this money. So at some point they're gonna say, okay, this is an acceptable risk and we're going to take this risk because we need the money. So we need to think about if we're gonna pay them, we need to pay them much more or you know, not climb. And that's a difficult choice to make. Very interesting there. Uh, Ram Chandra uh, Basset, uh, can you just come in and tell us uh, what, what are your views you are going to share in the conversation, sir? So, you know, that's my experience. I, I also have been working on this tourism sector since 2000, right? So it's already been 13 years. So, you know, the, from there to uh, now, so it is, you know, the one of the biggest, you know, the accident in the Mount Everest on the last 18th of April, right? So, so only the, you know, the climber, the Sherpa climber, they, you know, they tried to fix a rope and they, you know, the, on the way to uh, from Camp 1 to Camp 2, that is, you know, the that was happened uh, on around the like 5,800 meter. So that is not that much, uh, that so much high, right? right? But it is, you know, the like a uh, natural uh, incident, incident, right? So we cannot say, you know, we never know, you know, the what is going to happening around the mountain. And it's a big, you know, the loss for the, you know, the families and as well as you know, the for the alpine, alpine, you know, the club. Right, Mr. Ramchandra, what kind of talks or negotiations, uh, if, if you know any information, have actually uh, taken place because the Sherpas have demands in terms of securing the future, higher insurance, uh, you know, better pay. Uh, the government also should take in some measures to protect the livelihood of these Sherpas because it's entirely dependent on uh, the climbing uh, season as well. So how, how has this impacted the avalanche and the tragedy that has happened? How has it impacted the tourist and the climbing season? So it is, you know, the very bad, you know, the, you know, the for the, because the spring is the very best season for the climbing, right, to the, to the high mountain. So that's why it's a very big, you know, the bad things, what was happened, you know, the, in the Mount Everest and the, the, from the government, you know, that there is a policy, you know, the first way, uh, in the process of issue the uh, climbing permit, 
so they should have to you know the submit the insurance for the climbing sherpa they already you know the rise the amount from 500000 to the, uh, uh 1 million right so now and uh, like uh, 10 lakhs rupees and then but some agency they don't you know the follow that rules which is by the government so that's the main problem at the moment and sherpas who who are working there as a climber who you know the used to who used to uh, fix the rope for the clients so they are just you know the working for the money uh, there so if they don't get the you know the money and then they, they don't have you know the any choice it means like uh, like the, they are forced to go back to climbing and risking their lives right yes yes and uh, of course you know the, the agency they will pay the money to them the, to the sherpa climber but uh, not uh, as much as uh, you know the, they want because it is very you know the highly risky work and the uh, people should have to do all of stuff you know the hard work you know during the expeditions so and the clients other like a foreigner they are just you know the just follow the you know the fixed rope to the to, you know the top of the mount everest so all the hard work that the sherpas have have to you know have done before you know the start the climbing section I just want to bring in Percy at this point, like uh, Ramchandra and Karna both pointing out, the Sherpas clearly are not part of the spotlight. You know, they are forgotten heroes. Uh, often it's their condition which gets overlooked, not only by the Nepalese government, but by a lot of uh, climbers who take it for granted that the Sherpas are doing it for money. It's, it's their business, it's a trade for them. Uh, do you feel that is where it's the attitude, a change of attitude and a change of the systems in place that really needs to take place, uh, you know, like an overhaul? Uh, I think it is true, partly yes. Uh, there are certain uh, climbers, uh, Sherpa climbers, who, who, are, uh, who are famous, uh, uh, but that's an exception, but not the rule. Uh, having said that, uh, a lot many climbers, uh, Sherpa climbers, uh, who have to, they have to haggle with the expedition operators uh, for, uh, for their worth. Mm. Uh, so, which means that if you are a climbing Sherpa with, let us say, one of the top of the line outfitter, let's say uh, the Himalayan expeditions run by Russell Bryce, who charges anything about sixty-five thousand or seventy-five thousand dollars above. Uh, so, if you're the lead climber, let's say the climbing sardar, as they call in the mountaining parlance, which which means that you are responsible for fixing and leading uh, up the mountains and basically guiding clients. Uh, but uh, but only few climbing sherpas get to earn a lot, uh, and that uh, the rest of them literally have to. Uh, negotiate their worth uh, with the the uh, with the chief executive of that particular tour operator. Uh, so uh, yes, uh, which means let us say 95% of the climbing sherpas uh, literally have to uh, literally have haggle. to haggle. So which means there are no uh, policies in place, there are no rules and regulations in place. Uh, though they have, uh, let us say, the expedition operators association called the EOA, mm -hmm. which binds all the tour operators. Uh, but they only come in if there is an issue. Uh, otherwise, uh, they don't look into the welfare uh, and the conditions of the uh, Sherpas. Right. Uh, uh, because yes, they do uh, get paid in this season for let's say two months, mm -hmm. spring. Uh, but that's uh, someone who's uh, earning more than $7,000 is actually few and far between. Uh, so I, 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 I personally feel and I quite strongly feel um, that there has to be uh, an immediate um, introspection and of course more importantly an uniformity in terms of actually laying out the rules and regulations as to how much money should let's say a climber uh, uh, get, gets paid uh, and also disgustingly uh, the icefall doctors mm -hmm. I, 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 I strongly feel they are the DNA of, uh, of the entire Everest expedition climbing because it's one of the most most difficult things you have to be there to actually experience it's, it's, it's amazing, the, the crevices are 50 foot wide and 50 foot uh, perpendicular, horizontal. So every, uh, day, uh, every day, day after day, night after night, they are on the ice fall, uh, fixing the ice fall so that uh, climbers, clients can actually go onto the ice fall the next morning. It's one of the most difficult uh, uh, things and perhaps one of the most difficult, difficult and challenging professions in life. Uh, so I guess, and, and the ice fall doctors are really poorly paid. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so I think uh, uh, the icefall doctors are, I would say, the, at the bottom of the starter, uh, uh, and and they are tough as nails, um, and and uh, so it is it is it's absolutely disgusting to imagine 
um, uh, the, the climbing Sherpas along with the Asphalt Doctors are completely uh, neglected to the bottom of the strata. Uh, so I think the expedition, and it quite uh, disturbing and quite intriguing uh, to know none of the expedition operators have uh, announced uh, compensation exactly. uh, for the show. Yes. While the Western world, and particularly if you look at the Western media, they have actually gone um, gaga or saying, have they taken the high moral ground? Mm -hmm. uh, saying, um, well, of course, uh, the Nepalese government have to uh, uh, put things in more, place, things right. and uh, that. Uh, but what about the top of the line outfitters who are actually charging $100,000? Right. Uh, they have not announced one week gone, they have still not one single operator have announced compensation for the lost guides and for the lost lives. I think that's something I think we need to ask. Absolutely. Uh, the, uh, that's the a operators. very, very valid point uh, that Percy is raising. Sindhu, if you could share your thoughts, how physically challenging is it and expensive in terms of investment and the monies that one needs to actually, you know, uh, go all the way to even Everest Base Camp and attempt to, you know, go to the summit as an individual mountaineer, uh, you know, how heavy is it on the pocket? Um, you know, it, it could cost you anywhere from 65000 to $100,000 upwards, depending on which, you know, mountaineering group or the, the outfit operator. that you operate, right? So, of course, the, the more well-known ones, you, you could be shelling out in the tunes of 90000 to 100000 US dollars, which is not very cheap. But again, when you, when you look at how much money actually trickles down to these guys who are, in fact, responsible for your summit, it is, it is pretty appalling because they only have, like, the two- to three-month window you know, yes. in which for them to make the money. And these guys, they make anywhere from 5000 to 7000 for the numerous round trips that they need to make, right? Not just fixing the ropes, but sort of re refueling and camping. So you have four camps as you, as you progress up. So, you know, they just do a lot of work. And uh, in fact, there is a term um, in the mountaineering community where, you know, they say that you have submitted but on Sherpa legs. Yeah. So which means that a lot of times, it's not even your feet on the ground, right? These guys are literally carrying you to the top so you can take your selfie. I think the world's most you know, famous and difficult selfie is the Everest selfie these days, right? right? So you just go take that selfie and then you come down. Right. Yeah. Uh, I'm getting a, a lot of uh, Twitter feed here uh, on our Twitter handle, at the rate India Post Live. We have Snow Leopard who says that Mount Everest has now become a tourist destination and the tragedy has proven that it should not be taken lightly, that there need to be some measures. We also have uh, Chandrasekhar Ray who says, the Nepal government said it would pay the families of each Sherpa who died just about 40,000 rupees. Don't they deserve much more? Uh, clearly, uh, it is trending on our Twitter page and comments coming in on the website. Uh, Karan, I'll just bring you in at this point. Uh, you've been listening to Percy and Sindhu. Uh, what are your thoughts in getting a system in place? You know, the Sherpas are a neglected lot, like you've also pointed out. What more needs the Nepalese government, uh, you know, can they do because they also depend heavily on the tourist season it's not just the mountaineers and the expeditions for everest but also the tourists you know enjoy the sightseeing in nepal they it's a quid pro quo as such right so uh, just to start like percy said mountaineering high altitude mountaineering is extremely dangerous in fact according to statistics it's only slightly less dangerous than russian roulette which means if you put a gun a bullet in a revolver spin the barrel and shoot shoot at your head you're almost as likely to die as you are in high altitude mountains. So it's extremely dangerous. And we have to accept, and the Sherpas have to accept, that they are climbers. You know, so they also have a responsibility. When you climb, you accept that there is a responsibility that you and the people you are with could die. And if you, Prachi, if tomorrow you, if you go to Nepal and you sign up for an Everest expedition with no mountaineering ex experience at all, you will be on an Everest expedition as long as you pay. And with a little training, you will be on Everest soon enough. So I think that Sherpas also have to start looking at this more responsibly and stop, stop. I mean, uh, like John Krakow in his book, who chronicled the 96 disaster on Everest, which was also very big. You know, the main problem here is that non-climbers are climbing Everest. People who are not, who have no climbing skills. And the Sherpas, who, as we've seen, are forced to do this. I mean, they have to earn a living, yeah. Mm. You know, so they're going to be climbing. So I think Sherpas also need to start looking at this a little more responsibly, you know, in, in terms that they can't be pulling people, like Sindhu said, people are getting pulled up the mountain. You know, people are getting carried up the mountain. My friends have been pulled up the mountain. And, you know, I think Sherpas need to start looking at whether it's acceptable to do this, whether it's even considered if you're pulled up the mountain and you take a selfie of yourself on top of the mountain, 
do you still consider that you've climbed this mountain or has someone pulled pulled you up this mountain so right. maybe and i know it's 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 easy to sit here and lay and and say the sherpa should do this and do that but i know it's it's much harder to actually be there but i think they need to start looking at who should be going up this mountain what kind of expeditions of course there are great companies out there like percy said there are extremely good mountain guides extremely good companies but there are also some pretty not great companies that are doing this stuff yeah there are you know uh, not very experienced climbers up there there are non climbers up there so maybe sherpas as climbers also need to start looking a little more inside and see what climbing means to them and whether it's really worth it right i think that's right ramchand would you like to say something and uh, give a reaction to what karan and percy are saying that the sherpa community as well needs to do some introspection that you can't constantly haggle and just make a livelihood you need to also worry about you know what kind of climbers you're taking up what is your safety net as such do you feel and what is the feedback you're getting from the sherpa community you know you are in close touch with many of them can you share with us some information i believe uh, we've lost uh, connection with uh, ramchandra he's a tour operator there in kathmandu uh, kan uh, would you like to uh, give in a few tips uh, to uh, alpine climbers or mountain climbers as such who would possibly be looking at uh, uh, not just everest but any kind of a climb how physically uh, daunting is it and what preparations uh, would one need to do well physically it's extremely extremely demanding i think it's one of the most physically uh demanding sports in the world I, i don't even know if it's a sport but you know you're out in the mountain for a multiple number of days you're faced with your all it's like, like you said like i said it's not a freak accident you're always uh, always uh, in front of hazards like rock fall crevasses uh, avalanches of course then there's high altitude sickness there's you can uh, there's pulmonary edema there's cerebral edema there's literally there's a hundred things that can kill you there's a hundred things that can go wrong you can slip and fall and that will kill you you know so of course you know it's it's extremely difficult so my suggestion really is let's as climbers if you want to climb focus on something that you can climb within your abilities you know work on your technical skills work on your physical skills people need i mean most climbers on everest i doubt how many of them you know are extremely skilled rock climbers or ice climbers it's the sherpas who are the skilled climbers here and of course some of the western guides you know so as climbers we need to start working especially indians you know because indians really believe in the seat style climbing and not in an alpine uh, philosophy you know, so we need to start working on our technical skills our physical skills we indians are not the strongest climbers in the world yeah and uh, of course climb smaller mountains because the beauty of everest really is that it's it's the highest mountain in the world why so many people want to go there and get a selfie on top there are many mountains smaller mountains can be as challenging if not more challenging you know i think as indian climbers we need to start thinking about uh, climbing within our abilities really <laughs> that's that's my advice yeah <laughs> interesting uh, i'll just try and go to ramchandra again uh, can you hear us ramchandra Yes, yes. I I just lost the network. So right. I'm sorry for that. We are just uh, we are just discussing what is the introspection that Sherpas as a community needs to do. You're in touch with many of the Sherpas who actually depend their livelihood depends on the climbing season. But do they need to also be more careful? Have a safety net? The relief fund uh, actually announced by the Nepal government uh, is something that they were demanding. But there is a lot of tension among the Sherpa community as well. So what are the steps they need to take? yeah you know the first of all you know that the the big incidents is already what already happened right so now we don't need to you know the uh, you know the come back with that those you know the accident because the, the some of the sherpa's family they are you know that they call their family member who joined for the climbing like uh, you know the climbing member right the climbing sherpa they call them uh, you know the return to home because of the, that incident they don't want to lose their uh, against their family member right so they are you know you know the big tragedy it's so sad you know the incident over there but i think there's a problem uh, posi i'll just come to you for your last thoughts uh, uh, 
how uh, you know how can we what is the way forward then for uh, climbers you said a lot of uh, you know foreign operators did not announce a compensation they didn't come forward with any kind of concrete help but is a relief fund for injuries accidents for the sherpa community any sort of uh, a concrete step yeah i think uh, uh, i think yeah it's before that i just wanted to uh, respond to uh, uh, your question about introspection I think if there's any community who needs to introspect, it is uh, us and not the Sherpas. That's very clear uh, because uh, because that's what they uh, they do. What that's uh, 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 they are skilled at mountaineering and they're great mountaineers uh, because it happens to be Everest, and uh, they get to earn uh, let's say um, hundred times more than their annual income uh, uh, than any other normal Nepalese would would earn in a year, or let's say ten times. Uh, so uh, I think the introspection needs to come from uh, all the stakeholders, uh, because without the Sherpas, the entire Everest industry would close down. Right. Let us be very clear on that. It's very simple, um, and it's, so it's ba it's basic and it's common sense. So it is the expedition operators um, who basically form the I would say the uh, the crux and the linchpin of the entire Everest trade needs to introspect uh, and put. Uh, uh, safety measures in place. As Karan rightly said, if you're a mountaineer, uh, you know risk is part uh, of, you part of, it's part of uh, the sport, it's part of the uh, process. Uh, what you can do is basically to, to manage risks uh, uh, if, if you're a, and also you don't have to, um, it's easy to fall in the trap. Uh, um, uh, going back to what Karan said, uh, you could still uh, be uh, a novice. Uh, and basically um, opt for the top of the line operator whose safety record is absolutely uh, immaculate. Uh, for example, Russell Bryce's safety record is, is immaculate. He's just lost one uh, uh, guide, mm -hmm. uh, that to on a freak accident, mm -hmm. uh, which, is, which is absolutely normal, it's part of the process. Uh, and also, which means uh, uh, the expedition operator uh, takes care uh, of each and every step in the two months that you, you're there and at, at, at on the mountain. Um, so uh, what I saw personally is that um, uh, the, the less of the fees, let us say if, you, if, you, if you're paying $40,000, it may $30,000, and uh, which means people start cutting corners, uh, which means the Sherpas are paid less. Mm -hmm. um, and this happens with most of the Indian clients uh, because they, don't, they want to climb the mountain because it happens to be the highest mountain in the world. Uh, they don't have that much of money. Let's right. say vis-a-vis, uh, -vis, uh, let's say someone who has $100,000, well, I can only afford, let's say, $30,000. Right. So I find an operator. So you cut corners. Mm -hmm. You can't cut corners, right. particularly in the mountain, which yes. means it's death. Yes. Uh, as simple as that. And uh, I just wanted to recall what my expedition leader, Colonel Sharma, said. Uh, he, he's, uh, he's, a, he's a mountain of our excellence. Uh, he's done 23 expeditions. Um, all, all top mountains in the world. And he said uh, something which is very interesting and quite, uh, uh, I think, uh, uh, appropriate. Uh, Mount Everest should be branded and termed as a trekking peak because it is no more a mountain, uh, or let us say, uh, in the classic sense. Okay. So if you basically reduce uh, mountain, uh, Mount Everest to a trekking peak, mm -hmm. the whole value of actually reaching the summit and reaching the highest mountain in the world uh, will no more be with us uh, in our minds. The pressure, the aura. Uh, absolutely. Uh, so, and indeed, it is a trekking peak. Not to rob of anything away from all the people who have summited. It is extremely daunting. Well, I, I think uh, it's a bit exaggerating to say that the Sherpas actually carry uh, people. You can haul up, but it's very, very difficult. I mean, you have to be there. Physically. It's absolutely, it's very difficult even to take, take a bloody step uh, about 6,000 meters. I mean, you're staying in base camp for two months, breathing 50% of oxygen if you were uh, 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 breathing right. in Delhi or uh, at sea level. So it's ex one, of course, uh, it's ex extremely daunting, extremely challenging. Mm -hmm. um, uh, there were actually reports from the Nepalese uh, Tourism Ministry to increase the fees, uh, the permit fees. Permit fees uh, right. So that was basically a deterrent uh, mm -hmm. for people to not to uh, Attempt climb. It. Right. But I think I, I, don't, I don't see... Uh, that is a deterrent. Uh, people will always have money. People always will sell houses. People will always, uh, in fact, I was uh, reading a blog by a Britisher, uh, by an Englishman who was a banker, who sold yes. everything. Yes, quit his job. And everything. And right. now he's saying, I'm lost. I don't have a house. I don't have a job. Right. And, well, I'm going back home. Uh, I don't know what to do. Right. Uh, so this whole, uh, the, the pressure to climb uh, the highest mountain, and if it is deemed now, it's, it's, uh, it's a trekking peak. Yes. 
then uh, perhaps I think that's one reason that I, uh, one way perhaps to dissuade uh, uh, the so-called uh, novices who even don't know to wear actually crampons, right. who are actually right. wearing crampons for the first time. One last uh, comment from Sindhu, we are running out of time. Sindhu, uh, one uh, top tip that you would give to avid mountaineers, not just for the Everest, uh, but like Karan said, for any kind of climber, what really does it take uh, to actually be able to climb uh, or scale a mountain? I think, um, you know, the obvious ones are, physical part of fitness. it, right? Fitness, so endurance, strength, you know, stamina. So these are like the, the obvious ones. But I think uh, if you just sit down and reflect, uh, I think it goes on a more deeper level of respecting the mountain, uh, respecting nature, and just not thinking that, oh, I'm just here to conquer a mountain, right? Yeah. Because you don't. At the end of the day, you don't. And, and like, uh, you know, like all these guys are saying, you need to be there to understand the power that nature has on you. I mean, the first time I saw a peak, I was in tears, right? And every time I go back, it's the same, it's just the same emotion. So I think the first and foremost thing is to respect the mountain, respect nature, and literally ask for its, you know, permission for you to sort of right. summit. Yeah. On that on that positive note, I'll thank all our guests from jo for joining us. Uh, Karan from Lay, taking out time. Uh, thank you so much uh, for your interesting experiences and valuable inputs. Also, Ram Chandra, uh, thank you, Mr. Ramchandra, for joining us from Kachpandu with your uh, comments you, and you. feedback. Can I, can I say something about yes, the Yes, sir, very quickly. Yes, sir, very quickly. We've run out of time, sir. Okay, so yesterday, you know, the government personnel also, they went to the base camp and they are, you know, the talking with the Sherpa community, you know, the how how they can, you know, the negotiate with the people because they don't, they cannot stop the expedition things uh, now, right? So they have to give a continuity to, you know, the summit the Mount Everest for people waiting for the, you know, the expedition, climbing the Mount Everest because uh, they had got the, you know, the more than like uh, four, 400 people who, is, who, is, who are waiting for the, you know, the summit the Mount Everest. Right. So that's why, you know, that they should have to, you know, the con give a continue for the climbing. Right. So, they, uh, so uh, and then uh, yesterday the government personnel, they went there and they, call, you know, they negotiated with the Sherpa community and then how can they solve that problem and you know, the, what was happening you know, with the big avalanche in Mount Everest. Right. Uh, might be, if, uh, you know, the, from a couple of days after and they are going to, you know, the start again the fixing rope over there and then continue their ex expedition things. Okay, thank you so much for that input. Uh, clearly a last ditch effort by the Nepalese government and the mountaineering community in Nepal to make sure that the climbing season continues. Uh, here's wishing them a lot of hope and good luck so that they make it to the summit. Uh, hail and hearty and uh, thank you so much for tuning in to India Post Live and the conversation uh, on the Everest Avalanche and what measures really a safety net that really needs to be put in place, not just for the Sherpa community, but introspection for the mountaineering community at large. Thank you so much. Goodbye.